What is the reason that some Brazilians live up to 110 years of age with a few remaining conscious and active even beyond 100? Why is the oldest living man Brazilian? Scientists think that it's time to study the country's super centenarian population. Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifics, where I will be taking you through the top science news from across the world from this week. The first story today is based on an article published on 6 January in Genomic Psychiatry Journal, which talks about Brazil being one of the world's most underused settings for genomic studies to understand human longevity. According to the article by researchers from the University of Sao Paulo, most human longevity studies focus on genetically homogeneous groups. What this does is that it misses the number of helpful genetic changes that can occur in societies with a more heterogeneous population. Brazil is the prime example, according to the study. From indigenous tribal populations to European colonization to the forced migration of Africans to later migrations of even Japanese populations, Brazil is supposed to have the richest genetic diversity in the world. The hypothesis goes that genetic diversity results in more DNA changes, meaning more chances of improved immune responses and more genetic causes of longevity. The authors themselves are currently studying centenarians and supercentenarians in Brazil, and they have found examples of people staying alive and functional to a very old age despite having limited access to healthcare. While not exactly causal yet, this study indicates that there is enough evidence in Brazil to study the genetic varieties and understand how humans have high life expectancies. Next up, researchers have found the world's oldest known evidence of arrow poison on Stone Age arrowheads from 60,000 years ago. The arrowheads were found in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa by Swedish and South African scientists. Published in Science Advances, the study explained how they detected chemical residues from gift ball, a highly toxic plant, on the arrow. It's a poison that is still used by traditional hunters in the region today. This study is the first direct proof that early humans used poisoned arrows. And it shows that people in southern Africa not only developed bow and arrow technology earlier than previously thought, but also possess the sophisticated knowledge of toxic plants and their effects. The residues that they found also correspond with those found on 250-year-old poisoned arrows from South Africa, which reveal a long continuity of plant-based hunting knowledge. This discovery highlights the advanced planning, experimentation and cause and effect reasoning in early modern humans. And it offers new insights into the cognitive abilities of Stone Age societies. Next, did you know that while your facial expressions may seem effortless, the brain actually prepares them through a sophisticated, coordinated process that begins well before the face moves? Scientists at the Rockefeller University and the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in a new study overturned the long-held idea that voluntary and emotional facial expressions are controlled by separate brain systems. Instead, multiple face control regions work together using different neural signals operating over distinct time scales. So the researchers found that both the brain regions encode facial gestures in advance and they combine fast dynamic signals that track muscle movement with slower, stable signals that reflect intention and social context. You must be wondering why such research is necessary. Well, think of this. The findings help us understand how facial communication is finely tuned and what may go wrong after brain injury or in conditions where facial expressions cannot adequately signal social cues in people. This research opens up new avenues for us to understand and potentially restore facial communication in people in need. And finally, a study by the Institute of Science and Technology in Austria talks about the necessity of physics in the biology of early life. By studying the development of a zebrafish embryo, which grows outside the mother and is transparent, the scientists were able to explain that embryo growth does not just depend on genetic instructions, but also on physical shape and geometry. 
the scientists watched exactly how a fertilized egg goes through cell division and becomes a full-fledged living being. They used high-resolution imaging, experiments and mathematical modeling and they found that the egg's curvature is responsible for the difference in cell size during the earliest divisions. These size differences translate into variations in how fast individual cells progress through their division cycles. So smaller cells divide more slowly, creating gradients in timing across the embryo. And the importance of this physical pattern was visible when scientists experimentally altered the embryo's early geometry. They found that the cell division gradients and the gene activation patterns also changed, which led to downstream effects on the cell fate. The findings suggest that embryos read their own geometry to stay on schedule and that they have an essential geometry of their own. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for watching.